Here we are, Kiss Is it possible for him to go 10 rounds with an Achilles tendon rupture? Stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one source for information on orthopedic injuries and broken bones that's easy to understand for the everyday human. That's a little doctor joke we like to make around here. So today we're talking about the Uriorcus Gamboa injury. So for those of you who don't know, Uriorcus Gamboa is a Cuban professional boxer in the featherweight division. He is the former unified featherweight world champion. Gamboa fought Gervonta Tank Davis on December 28th 2019 for the WBC lightweight world title. Gamboa suffered a TKO loss to Davis in the 12th round of the fight and he appeared to be having difficulty moving for much of the fight. So what happened to Gamboa? If we look to the film we can see that during the first round Gamboa is moving well and he is avoiding most of Tank Davis's power punches. However during the second round Gamboa is knocked to the ground by a series of punches. Immediately when he stands up, we can see that he looks down to his right leg. There is no visible problem. Initially, as they resume fighting, his mobility appears unaffected. However, soon thereafter, we can see that there is a problem with his mobility and he is having a difficult time moving around the ring. In particular, he demonstrates difficulty balancing on his right leg, difficulty pushing off of his right leg, and difficulty in moving around the ring in general. As Gamboa fights in an orthodox stance, meaning his right foot is back, we know that his right foot is his plant foot. And this is the foot that allows him to generate power in his punches, particularly punches with the right hand. In between rounds when Gamboa is in the corner, he tells his staff that there was something wrong with his right leg. Nevertheless, they continue on in the fight. During the remainder of the fight, the ringside commentators speculate that there is something wrong with his shoe because there is clearly something that is wrong with his mobility, but they don't see that he is wincing with pain as he moves around the ring. Since he cannot move well, Gamboa is knocked down by Tank Davis several times, the final of which is in the 12th round for the TKO. Gamboa reveals in a post-fight interview that he injured his Achilles during the second round of the fight, but soldiered on for the next 10 rounds regardless. Since the second round, he, he, he has no support on that leg. The Achilles is the tendon that arises from the gastro-soleus complex, or in other words, the calf muscles. And it connects the calf muscles to the calcaneus, or in other words, the calf muscles to the heel bone. Its main action is to allow plantar flexion of the foot at the level of the ankle through contraction of the calf. When the calf contracts, this will allow you to push the toes downwards from the level of the ankle. When the calf contracts, it shortens in length. This pulls upwards on the Achilles. The Achilles, which is attached to the heel, pulls the heel upwards, which forces the toes down, plantar flexion. A complete Achilles tendon rupture is associated with a positive Thompson's test and an inability to plantar flex the foot. Complete loss of the Achilles would make walking difficult and running, jumping, or lunging forward, such as with power punching, almost completely impossible. However, it's important to note that there are other muscles which do assist somewhat in plantar flexion of the foot at the level of the ankle. So if we assume for a second that Gamboa did actually suffer this injury, how was he affected by this during the fight? We can see that after he got up following the knockdown in the second round, he demonstrated a complete lack of mobility for the remainder of the fight. His movement difficulties are indeed consistent with a deficit in plantar flexion and an Achilles tendon injury. Given the fact that he was able to soldier on in the fight, it's likely that the injury was not complete, but it is clear that there was some kind of deficit that was present during the remainder of the fight. Is it possible that there are other problems that may have caused this same presentation during the fight? Well, certainly it's possible that he could have sustained an ankle sprain or a fracture of one of the bones in the foot. But at any rate, he was able to have his ankle taped and continue the fight, albeit with great difficulty. Gamboa basically became a punching bag for Tank Davis for the next 10 rounds of the fight. A subsequent MRI confirmed that there was a rupture of the Achilles tendon. They did not report the grade, or in other words, the severity of the injury, so we do not know at this point whether this was a high grade partial tear or a complete tear. However, based on his ability to continue for an additional 10 rounds after this injury, 
I would venture to guess that this was a high grade partial tear of the Achilles tendon. So with all that being said, what now? Achilles tendon injuries can be treated both non-operatively and operatively with relatively comparable results. Time to healing with both approaches is relatively similar. However, given the fact that he is a professional athlete, I suspect that he will opt to go for the surgical route of treatment. For more information on Achilles tendon injuries and their treatment, check out my video on Kevin Durant's Achilles tendon rupture during the 2019 NBA Finals. In general, we can expect healing and rehabilitation to take around six months. Gamboa has requested a rematch once healed. However, only time will tell whether or not this will actually happen. Be sure to share your thoughts on this injury and whether or not you think that this injury made a difference during the fight. So there you have it. Today we've been talking about the Uriorcus Gamboa injury and whether or not he could survive 10 rounds with Achilles tendon rupture. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.